Let's talk about the weird ass co-main event on top of it. This was another weird one where I was like, what the fuck is happening here? Okay, Jack Hermanson defeats Chris Curtis and did it without a takedown, which I did not think would be possible. I thought for sure he had to get the takedown to win. I was wrong. But BC, Chris Curtis never really cut him off. And at first he was flipping him off when they read the thing and he took to Twitter and he was like, I was prepared. I should have prepared for a track meet. And then as his emotions settled, he thought better of it and realized that like, hey, this is the fight game and that's the way that it goes. So, you know, I, I appreciate Chris Curtis um, mentally, I should say, sobering up in that sense. But BC, like, I can't quite make heads or tails of this. Did Jack Hermanson's stock go up or did Chris Curtis's just go down? Both. And I can make easy heads and tails of this because I predicted, despite the fact that Hermanson was an underdog and despite that in each category, for the most part, we could have given Curtis the edge on paper. But the reason why I picked Hermanson and the reason why I wasn't surprised that he ultimately won this way is because he needed this win way more than Curtis did. And Luke, if we're being honest about the 35-year-old Curtis, who's been very impressive in sort of having this late run to find out how good he can be, he's been opportunistic of taking advantage of this opportunity, you know, going in there, getting big finishes. I had a feeling Jack was going to be as gritty as possible. And sometimes being gritty when you need to win, Luke, means you're stubborn. Some, we always think of gritty as bite down, go in there and get into a war. This was more about being stubborn. This reminded me of Jan Blahovich getting the boring-ass five-round decision over uh, Ronaldo Souza at a time where he was getting the close-up, the main event, trying to get ready for a title shot. We wanted him to bust through with the Polish power. Instead, he got a boring takedown defense win because for him in that moment, it was survive in advance. For, for Jack in this moment, Luke, it was survive in advance. I don't think it goes negatively against his stock. Look at his run. What was he, 3-3 three and three in his last six? All against pretty damn good competition. At his age, given how good he is comparative to the record he's had of late, he needed to find a way to win. He found that way. I think you can be uh, dismissive of Curtis not... Yeah, like you said, not realizing the circumstances, leaning more into the middle finger, why aren't you going to fight me, rather than figuring out a way to get it done. The, because of the way Jack fought against Strickland, made it so close on the feet without needing the wrestling because it got taken from him, uh, I knew this was possible, and I'll give him credit, Luke. He pulled it out. He was stubborn as shit. He doesn't care if you were entertained. This wasn't what this is about. This is about getting another fight night main event. This is about climbing the rankings. This is about getting to that title shot. He did what he had to do. I'm sorry it was a boring-ass co-main, and maybe it played into the overall letdown feeling of this card. But, Luke, you know, he had a, he had a more exciting guy in front of him who could do more things. He just played the angles, was gritty, and, and got it done, dude. I, I take my head off to him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you're going to win fans or, or whatever, but sometimes it's about winning, Luke. I'll say this. I thought, here, here's where I was wrong. I thought that for Hermanson to win, it's not that he couldn't win with striking, but that it was sort of like Frankie Edgar-ish, where it has to be combined with the wrestling as a dual threat for both of them to do what they want to be able to do. And that wasn't the case here. I will give credit to Chris Curtis. It is true that the Hadolfo Vieira fight was a good warm-up in the sense of takedown defense. Jack Hermanson could not get a takedown. In fact, he went 0 for 6. Good job by Chris Curtis stuffing the takedown. He clearly was prepared for that. I will also say I thought Jack Hermanson did a really great job with rhythm disruption. He was going first. He was maintaining distance. He was you throwing that high kick to occupy the left hand of Chris Curtis constantly, right? And then the lateral movement and everything. He was doing enough where Chris Curtis couldn't get into a rhythm and a flow state. He did have some decent body work, which he always does, but he couldn't really make a lot of effective use of it by virtue of the fact that he didn't cut off the cage at all. He was kind of following and chasing a little bit rather than throwing sort of strategic low kicks in, in, in ways that would limit the potential movement side to side of Jack Hermanson. And so Jack Hermanson did exactly what he needed to. He was on his horse. It was effective lateral movement. It was good rhythm disruption. It was good range management. If you had told me, could he do that for 15 minutes ahead of time, I would have, before the fight, I would have expressed some skepticism about that. I would have expressed, I don't know. I think that Chris Curtis probably would have been able to cut him off. Now I think about it, like why didn't Chris Curtis do it? Maybe that's not one of his stronger skill sets. He seems to be a little bit more boxing-based than kickboxing-based as a striker. Something else to think about, BC, is he does have one fight in the grander UFC octagon when he fought on the Usman Covington card when he fought Phil Hawes. But Phil Hawes was kind of like a come-forward sort of guy. Right. He didn't have to chase him down. The other fights that he has are in the apex, which is the smaller octagon. We go back to this all the time, man. There is a real difference, not for every fighter every time, but for many fighters many times, 
if your only experience is in the, in the practice room on an open mat or the small cage, you don't, you don't have the right training or the background in terms of what you might need for the big cage and learning how to cut off and really understanding that as a priority. Jack Hermanson has a lot of experience, big cage, small cage, at home, wherever. So he was really able to make nimble use of this. It was it was not necessarily all that entertaining, I could tell from them what the fans were saying, but it was very effective. I, I don't, but here's the thing, BC, and I'm not trying to be, bag on uh, Jack Hermanson. He proved he could do something I didn't think he could do, and I'm acknowledging I was wrong right up front. However, did you get the sense that the guys he's lost to, by virtue of this performance, you think he can now beat? That I did not come up with. Not, I mean, not necessarily. Did he show enough striking prowess to, yeah, to make that leap? No, but he 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 figured out a striking plan that would work, and he stuck with it. So, again, it was it was about surviving and advancing. And I think Curtis, you you broke it down from a technical standpoint, but I also think it's a mental standpoint. I think he was playing with house money. I think he was, you know, kind of happy to be there. Everything, you know, everything was starting to come together, and he just thought it would come to him. And he would figure it out like he'd done of late. And when it when it didn't, he didn't have the the plan B and the adjustments necessary. So uh, I think it's more praise for Jack in my breakdown than than negative pra- You know, the negative comments at Curtis. But it is somewhat equal in that regard. And I like your you know bringing rhythm disruption into the into the vernacular of this show, Luke. I haven't seen rhythm disruption like that in, ex- when they except for when they had long dialogue in adult films in the 90s. You know, I'm glad they got rid of those parts, right, Luke? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I never understand about adult films is why everyone breathes through their teeth. You ever notice that? <sighs> <laughs> uh, no, but I'll look out for it uh, one day. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, I was more, uh, you know, I, see, I was a big Cinemax and Showtime and HBO guy like most 13 year olds, Luke. I mean, you remember Night Eyes 1, 2, and 3 with Andrew Stevens and Shannon Tweed, Luke. What a franchise. Can't right? say that I do. I do remember Red Shoe Diaries, but I don't remember that. All right. A lot of people out there definitely just woke up and, you know, did the DiCaprio meme of, you know, BC, I was there with you, right? Not in the same room. That'd be a little awkward. All right. They, so, BC, got it, you got Jack Hermanson sitting at eight. Hard to say exactly where he might go from here in terms of the ranking because Chris Curtis was coming in off short notice and is not ranked. And then Darren Till. Where's Till sitting at? He was sitting at nine. So this was eight versus nine, or at least it was supposed to be, I should say, eight versus nine. Here's the problem. Number seven is Sean Strickland, who recently, recently recently-ish, beat Jack Hermanson. So if you're Jack Hermanson, I get your point. Okay, I didn't didn't lose to an... It would have been, to, to the point you raised, it would have been real bad for Jack Hermanson from a ranking standpoint, at a bare minimum, to lose to an unranked guy. But the guys ahead of him, B.C., Sean Strickland, Paulo Costa, Alex Pereira, Derek Brunson, Marvin Vittori, Jared Cannonier, Robert Whitaker. I don't know if what which one of those he's going to get. Sean Strickland just got KO'd, already has a win over him. I'll Paulo tell Costa you. has. Let me, real quickly, let me, go, let me run through it. Paulo Costa has the bout with Luke Rockhold coming up. We'll see how that goes. Pereira obviously is going to fight Izzy at some point. I guess Brunson is sitting out there. That's one you no. could potentially do. No. Vittori, I don't know. Cannonier no. just lost. And then Whitaker is going to fight. Vittori, sorry, Vittori and Whitaker are going to fight in. Paris or soon thereafter, wherever that's supposed to be. What, what, what happens next? He should fight Darren Till because Darren Till's name is much stronger than his recent track record and proven ability of late, especially since moving up to middleweight. You get a win over Darren, or you get to fight Darren Till, it's probably going to be a main event, maybe even be in Europe, you know? He's been pushing to get on the Sweden card coming up. I mean, I'd like that as the main event. The whole point here is that Darren Till is a little bit of a celebrity still at this point. I think that that's more valuable to him than trying to move a little bit higher and fight the next ranked name who's coming off a loss, who's got some... No, fight Till. I still think it's a matchup that 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 to some degree he can do well in, Luke, and uh, I think it's more it's more valuable to get a win at this point over a name like that than anything else. I mean, you know, he could fight Brunson, but we all kind of consider Brunson's now going the other way, Luke. Although he did... He did have a nice win streak there for a while, um, but it did get derailed. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Uh, the, uh, how about this one, though? One more of these. A couple more of these, actually. What about a, a Jack Hermanson versus the guy who won big at UFC 276 over uh, Uriah Hall? What about Andre Muniz? Andre Muniz. You could. Look, grappler, you could. G- you kind of have grappler-grappler there a little I bit. I mean, it's not like Jack is in a position... 
uh, where he has a lot of leverage in this regard, but that kind of feels like a step back, Luke. He wants to get back in. He wants to make noise, Luke. You fight Muniz, you're kind of probably buried, you know, like second fight in the main card on a fight night somewhere. You know, you fight till you're the main event, Luke, okay? That's what I'm talking about. 